Yeah, my name is Anna Widowson. I work at UKAA on JET and uh, my area of expertise is um, analysing components that come out of JET to study fuel retention, um, uh, erosion, deposition and material migration. And my actual role is the erosion deposition group leader. So during the DTE3 campaign, we're looking at fuel retention in the vessel. So um, I'm involved in one of the in the research topic um, associated with this. And so we've been doing gas balance experiments, injecting gas into the vessel, running plasmas, and then um, collecting the gas at the end of the day to see what the global fuel retention is in the vessel. But I'm also working on the laser induced desorption of uh, of fuel from the tiles in the vessel so that we can do an in situ measurement of fuel retention on wall components in jet. Yes, yeah, so when we run the tokamak, we have to inject a fuel, which is hydrogen isotopes. And in the DT campaign, we're injecting deuterium and tritium. So this is our fuel. So, um, and when we um, operate um, the tokamak, then some of this fuel gets deposited onto the surface of the tiles. Now, tritium, because it's radioactive, um, you have an inventory of how much tritium you can have in the vessel. So collecting tritium on your wall is not, um, is not desirable. So you need to be able to um, understand how much fuel you've retained in the vessel, hence fuel retention. I mentioned the laser induced desorption. So this is a new diagnostic that we've put onto JET. Um, and we use a laser to heat the surface of the tile. And then the, the fuel, which is gaseous, comes off. And then we detect that using a uh, quadrupole mass spectrometry. So this is measuring the mass of the molecules that come off. So if we have tritium, we have uh, a molecule of mass six. If we have a deuterium tritium molecule, we have a mass five. If we have deuter deuterium alone, then it's mass four. So we're looking using the quadrupole mass spectrometry to investigate um, the fuel that's removed via this heating from the laser. Well, now is because JET is operating with tritium, deuterium tritium mixture for the last time before we stop operations. So it's the last opportunity to demonstrate um, this in situ measurement of actual tr tritium retention in the vessel. So this is the final opportunity. Um, and we started the project during lockdown. So all the designing happened happened during lockdown and it takes, you know, it takes time to get these diagnostics um, designed and put on to onto JET. So yeah, it's just taken us this year and a half, two years to get everything onto JET um, and ready to be operated. So um, it's in time to be exploited for the final deuterium tritium campaign. Actually, it's pretty amazing. I have to say, particularly over the last few months, two to three months, there's been an amazing push from um, ULIG scientists and UKAA scientists and engineers and I mean, so many people have been involved in getting this project off the ground. And I think even a few months ago, there, you know, there were potentially issues still remaining and we just seem to have ironed them out. Basically, we're operating routinely, um, but we're mainly restricted by the JET programme. We could operate every day if we wanted to, but we have to fit in um, other programmes into, uh, into the schedule. So it's not just lid QMS and fuel retention.
one of the main things is to demonstrate that we have the um, capability and sensitivity for desorbing the fuel and measuring it, so desorbing the tritium and measuring it. And one of the main benefits will be in future tokamaks to do this in situ measurement of fuel so that you can um, keep track of your inventory of tritium in the vessel. Every operating tokamak, uh, fusion device, power plant, we'll need to have a tritium inventory and we need to understand how we can monitor that. 